lot of issues, information in such a short time. So it's up to you for remarks and questions and uh, your own information. Thank you very much. Um, so what were, were the reasons? How, uh, why this uh, reform got stuck and how? And um, what is the, the future we can expect about that? <coughs> Good morning, my name is Christian Wagner from the Institute for International and Security Affairs. I have two questions. One, what is the role about of the religious parties now one year after the election? Second point, you focused mainly on the domestic situation. I would also like to know what is the um, relationship um, with your biggest neighbor, India, concerning security, migrants, the, uh, the water issues, so also focusing on the foreign policy aspects. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, a lot of efforts uh, were given to the process of police reform by the government itself and uh, during the emergency period and also the institution of police as well as the civil society, the NGOs, concerned NGOs. But then somehow or other it has again uh, st uh, stopped somewhere, but then we actually don't know the reason for that. There may be many reasons. Uh, well, police has always been used by the respective governments in their favor or to serve their own purpose. I don't know whether that's the main reason why the reform has not taken place. The police itself is very frustrated about it. And, and extrajudicial killing, yes, I mean, that is what we say, that this is uh, actually a reflection on the weakness of the judiciary when people support extrajudicial killing. But then it is in the Constitution that nobody, uh, no matter how, how I mean, uh, how uh, you know dangerous a person is, or, or um, uh, you know, uh, how, uh, no matter how uh, serious, uh, um, uh, what is it, the perpetrator has committed, how serious a crime it does. Uh, that is not the point. But the, the thing is that everybody has the right to self-defense, and will have to be dealt with through due process of law. But then that has not been maintained in the uh, extrajudicial killing. Incidents. So that is where we tried to, I mean, we didn't want to create any undue pressure on the judiciary as such. But then we just reminded them that that cannot be permitted in a democratic society where the Constitution has clear directives on how to really deal with all these matters. And Peter's question, culture of politics. I guess, the, I mean, uh, the, the election to the Ufozela position has taken place, but then again, I say that there has been a provision in the Ufozela Purushat Act that the MPs will perform a supervisory role there. But then there has been quite a lot of protest against that. And <coughs> now we hear that the, the Act will be reviewed, but then we have not heard anything concrete about it as yet. But then the evolution of power is a constitutional binding on the government. And we will expect that they will listen to that. And role of the religious power, yes, that is also again a very important uh, issue in the politics of Bangladesh. Uh, but then uh, recently there has been a lot of uh, move on the part of the government to see that the uh, fundamentalists or anybody who is using religion to really control people's life are not uh, allowed to function freely and uh, because of the connection of, I, I'll be very frank here, that was a very <coughs> connection which has a lot of, uh, I would say, uh, logic behind it, of the Jamaat Islami party with the war crime issue. Uh, the re religious parties, I believe, feel a little bit uh, uncomfortable to function in this particular uh, situation. And uh, uh, the ruling party has clearly said that they believe in secularism and they will promote secular principles and policies in the country. The education policy has been reformed already. It will take some time probably to implement those. But then the, it is quite apparent that in many ways this government is trying to uh, uh, promote secular principles in the state policies and state uh, functions. So. That, that is 
probably one of the main reasons why the uh, religious parties do not feel as powerful as they used to when they were uh, an alliance in the power structure. Uh, but then again, uh, it is also true that they will act in a desperate manner whenever they will feel more you know, uh, pressurized to disappear from the scene. So that's why the uh, threats are there. We sometimes see uh, you know, increase in the incidents of fatwas or uh, incidents of threats to secular people or progressive people in Bangladesh, the writers, journalists, and uh, other activists in, in Bangladesh. So, uh, and that has to be dealt with. It has not been easily uh, sort of managed, but then, or is not easily manageable, but it, it has to be dealt with. They have uh, gathered a lot of power in the social structure, in the economic structure, in the political structure. We have to be aware of that. And about the neighbors, uh, when we are uh, uh, witnessing <coughs> Bangladesh trying to work on connecting with neighbors and also, you know, uh, looking east and different kinds of foreign, foreign policies, but then uh, friendship <coughs> and enmity to now. Let's see how it progresses. We don't have full information about everything, but then we definitely are seeing some moves to really uh, kind of um, regenerate the relationship with India. Good morning, Sarah. Thank you for your presentation. I'm Diane from the European Delegation of Bangladesh. Uh, I would be interested about your opinion on, um, on the change of attitude of the government these last six months, because um, they came to power with a very uh, interesting, um, with a very, uh, um, interesting manifesto in which they pro were promising lots of changes. I mean, it was a, there was a strong promise for a real democratic government. Uh, they promised basically to, uh, to implement properly the peace accord, a zero tolerance policy, um, extrajudicial killings, and I can continue. But, uh, and, and basically the last one year, they more or less took steps that were, that were showing that they might go that way. But the last six months, we saw an extremely a, a big craze of extrajudicial killing. We saw that actually the peace accord, the implementation of the peace accord, I mean the steps towards implementation of the peace accord, completely stopped. Um, so how do you explain this change of attitude? And basically, there was a little bit um, uh, less patient towards opposition to the government. So how would you explain that? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, my question was about your uh, assessment uh, on the parliament. Pretty pessimistic, I think it, really, it reflects the reality pretty well. Um, and I was wondering, uh, do you think that we are sort of content to be running around in circles uh, time and again, and that you know this parliament won't work during this uh, in the rule of the Awami League? Or do you think that there will be uh, any way out, for example, like? enough critical mass of parliamentarians from both sides who would, be engaged, who would like to engage on a serious debate about health, education, energy, and you know, issues that could be the object of some kind of national consensus. 